uh, in this talk, I will present the results of a recent study which we conducted in Cyprus. And we have to investigate how speaking more than one language or two dialects of the same language affects adult uh, interpretation and processing of irony. Right, so this is an outline of the talk. I will start by very briefly summarizing the literature how bilingualism can be found to affect various aspects of cognition which are relevant to irony interpretation. I will then very briefly talk about different accounts of bilingual programmatic processing and also about two broad models of iron interpretation. I will then present our experimental study and finally I will close the presentation by summarizing our findings and discussing them. Right, so in general bilingualism has been found to have uh, an effect on various aspects of cognition. In this very brief introduction I will consider four aspects of this influence namely how bilingualism has been found to affect uh, vocabulary, executive control, theory of mind, and pragmatic skills. Right, so starting with uh, language performance first, starting with vocabulary skills more specifically, studies that have compared bilingual and monolingual participants' vocabulary skills have typically reported smaller vocabularies for bilinguals when each of their two languages are considered separately. And the explanation that is given for this effect is that Bilinguals, uh, in general, have lower vocabularies in each of their two languages as compared to monolinguals because they have lesser exposure and also, and also less opportunities to actually use each of their two languages as compared to monolinguals. Now, even though bilingualism has been found to have a negative effect on some aspects of language performance, including vocabulary skills, uh, on the other hand, there's some evidence that bilingualism has a positive effect on some other aspects of cognition, one such aspect being uh, executive control. So first of all, what is executive control? Executive control refers to uh, a set of cognitive processes which are considered to underlie flexible goal-directed behavior. And according to an influential account proposed by Miyagi and colleagues, executive control comprises three main cognitive uh, processes. That is task switching, which is the ability to flexibly switch from one task to another, working memory, which is the ability to simultaneously maintain and manipulate information in mind, and also inhibition, which is the ability to inhibit uh, irrelevant information. Now, early studies that compare bilingual and monolingual participants in tasks which are considered to tap into these uh, executive control skills reported superior bilingual performance, and this led some researchers to suggest the idea that bilingualism enhances executive control skills. And the explanation that is given for this bilingual cognitive advantage in executive control skills is that bilinguals exhibit this benefit because of their continuous everyday experience that they have in managing two different languages in the mind via the executive control system. And there's also some evidence that this bilingual cognitive advantage in executive control extends even for bilingual speakers of two very similar languages or even for or even to bilingual speakers of two closely related dialects of the same language. Right, now, even though initially there was indeed a lot of evidence that, that supported the idea that bilingualism enhances executive control skills, recently there have been also many studies that actually failed to replicate this bilingual performance advantage in executive control tasks, and this led some uh, researchers to cast doubt and challenge the whole idea that bilingualism enhances executive control skills. Right, so uh, another aspect of cognition for which a bilingual advantage has been reported is theory of mind, that is the ability to understand the mental states of other people and to uh, interpret their behavior based on these unobservable mental states. So um, uh, this evidence showing better theory of mind skills for bilinguals has mainly been reported for children, but there's also some evidence that uh, this uh, advantage in theory of mind skills also extends to bilingual adults uh, as well. And finally, there's also some evidence that uh, bilingualism has a positive effect on pragmatic skills. This evidence has mainly been provided by three studies conducted uh, by the group of Seagull and colleagues with preschool-aged uh, children. And basically, in three studies, uh, Seagull and colleagues showed that bilingual children of preschool age were better than their monolingual peers in detecting whether an utterance was conversationally inappropriate or not. And they were also better in understanding a specific type of implicature, that is, uh, scalar implicatures, as compared to uh, monolingual children. Now, Sika and colleagues provide two explanations in order to account for this bilingual pragmatic advantage reported in their three studies. 
The first explanation is that bilingual children uh, exhibit uh, a pragmatic advantage as compared to uh, monolingual children as a compensation for their lower language proficiency. And the second account proposed by Sigan Codex is that they exhibit better pragmatic skills, bilingual children exhibit better pragmatic skills as compared to monolingual children because of their enhanced executive control skills. Nevertheless, uh, more recently, we also conducted a couple of studies investigating the effect of multilingualism and bidialectalism on pragmatic skills, and more specifically on children's understanding of various types of implicatures. And in this uh, research, we did not find evidence for better pragmatic skills in multilingual and uh, bidialectal children. So currently, there seem to be three different views out there in the literature regarding the effect of bilingualism on pragmatics. According to the first view, uh, bilinguals enjoy a pragmatic advantage. According to the second view, bilinguals uh, have uh, comparable to monolinguals uh, pragmatic skills, at least when they reach, uh, when they have a sufficient uh, proficiency in the target language. And then according to the third view, which derives from a more general account of bilingual language processing, that is the interface hypothesis, so what the interface hypothesis suggests is that linguistic phenomena that lie at the interfaces between linguistic and extralinguistic systems, as is the case with pragmatic phenomena such as implicatures and irony. So these linguistic phenomena that lie at the interfaces between linguistic and extralinguistic systems, according to the interface hypothesis, lead, lead to enduring difficulties in bilinguals, which cannot be overcome even at the highest levels of language proficiency. So according to the interface hypothesis then, bilinguals uh, cannot attain monolingual-like uh, pragmatic performance uh, in either of their languages, even uh, at the highest levels of language provisions. Right, now a few words about models of irony interpre interpretation. So in the literature, various different uh, theoretical and psycholinguistic models have been offered in order to explain how we process and understand irony. So all these models can be summarized in two broad accounts. According to the first view, which is often referred to as the modular or literal first view of irony interpretation. Listeners, when they interpret irony, they first access uh, a complete, full-blown uh, literal interpretation, and then only in a second stage they, they reach the intended ironic interpretation. So according to this view then, ironic interpretations are always more effortful, they always, they always take more uh, time to process than uh, literal meanings, because they always involve this two-stage process whereby uh, a literal inter interpretation is first accessed, and then only in a second stage the intended ironic interpretation is reached. And according to the second uh, set of accounts, which are often uh, referred to as the direct access or the interactive uh, view of irony interpretation, uh, listeners, when they interpret irony, they do not first uh, they do not have to access a complete literal interpretation, but rather ironic interpretations can be accessed directly and as fast as literal meanings, at least. Uh, in certain conditions that are uh, certain contexts that bias or clearly indicate uh, an ironic interpretation. Right, so we'll now turn to our experimental study, which, as I said, aimed uh, to examine the effect of multilingualism and bidialectalism on adults' interpretation and processing of irony. And as a secondary goal, we were also interested in examining uh, the factors that affect uh, the processing and comprehension of irony in young adults. Right, now a few more words about why we were particularly interested in irony comprehension in this research on uh, multilingualism and bidialectalism. So in this research, we predicted that there might be a pragmatic advantage in irony, a, a bilingual pragmatic advantage in irony interpretation for two main uh, reasons. Uh, the first reason is that according to at least some theoretical accounts, irony is considered to be a distinct pragmatic phenomenon that draws on a higher order mind reading ability, that is on a certain order theory of mind uh, as compared to other implicatures, as compared to other pragmatic phenomena. So given on the one hand that bilinguals have been reported to possess superior theory of mind skills, and given on the other hand that irony is a pragmatic phenomenon that uh, at least according to some theoretical accounts, uh, more heavily draws on theory of mind skills, we predicted that bilinguals might have an advantage in terms of their irony interpretation skills. And the second reason for which we predicted a bilingual pragmatic advantage in irony interpretation is that there is some experimental evidence that bilinguals weigh non-verbal pragmatic information more heavily than linguistic cues when the two are in conflict during uh, language acquisition and processing. Right, so participants in our study included three different groups of young adults between 18 to 38 years uh, of age. 
All participants were recruited from Cyprus. The first group included 53 by dialectal speakers of Cypriot Greek and Standard Modern Greek. The second group included 41 multilingual speakers of Cypriot Greek, Standard Modern Greek and another language. And the third group included 32 monolingual speakers of only Standard Modern Greek. Now, all participants were given an extensive battery of tasks. For executive control, they were given three working memory tests, two inhibition tests and two task switching tests. Uh, all participants were further tested for their vocabulary proficiency in the language of testing, that is in Standard Modern Greek. They were also given a general intelligence uh, test. Uh, they were given two questionnaires measuring the presence of autistic traits on continuum scale, so that to examine whether the presence of autistic traits affect irony interpretation in young adults. And finally, we, we asked uh, all participants to complete an extensive language background and socioeconomic status questionnaire. Now, all participants were further given an irony comprehension test. Uh, the irony comprehension test was based on a previous study conducted by Kovacs and colleagues and, had, uh, and was an act out uh, paradigm. So the irony comprehension test included three uh, meaning conditions. In the ironic condition, uh, the speaker meant the opposite from what she actually said. In the literal no condition, the speaker provided a literal negative reply to the target question. In the literal yes uh, condition, the speaker provided a literal positive reply to the target question. Now, for the critical ironic items, we used ironic uh, criticisms, that is, uh, cases where the speaker said something positive in order to mean something uh, negative with a teasing and critical intention. For the critical ironic items, we also manipulated the cues that indicated that the target statement should be interpreted uh, ironically. So, in the context only condition, context was the only, the only factor that indicated that uh, the target statement should be interpreted uh, ironically. In the intonation only condition, intonation was the only ironic marker. In the intonation plus facial expression condition, both intonation and a distinctive uh, facial expression were used as cues indicating that the target statement should be interpreted ironically. And then we also had a fourth condition where three different ironic markers, that is context and intonation and facial expression, all were combined to indicate that the target statement should be interpreted uh, ironically. So in general, uh, the test included 38 total items. Two of those items were practiced. There were 12 items for each meaning condition and nine experimental trials for each Q condition. And we recorded both reaction times and accuracy from uh, the iron comprehension test. Right, a few more words about the iron comprehension test. So in this test, participants uh, watched videos with short conversations between a male and a female actor. The first actor would always say uh, a few things, a few things, and then would ask uh, the target question. And then the second character, the second actor, would reply to the target question with an ironic or a literal statement. Now, for each conversation, participants were presented with two items on a table, and they were instructed that they had to give to the second character the item uh, they believed she wanted based on what they understood from the whole uh, conversation. Right, so this is just to give you an example experimental trial from uh, the irony comprehension test. So this is uh, an example experimental trial from uh, the critical ironic uh, condition where three different markers, that is context, intonation, and facial expression, uh, were used as uh, cues that the target statement should be interpreted uh, ironically. So basically, uh, each item was composed of two uh, slides. Of three slides. In the first slide, the first actor will provide some contextual information regarding the second actor's uh, preferences. For example, he will say something like, uh, I know how much you like wearing shirts uh, when you go out for drinks at night. Then the first actor would uh, label the two items on the table, and finally, he would ask the target a uh, question. And then in the final third uh, slide, the second character would uh, reply to the target question with an ironic statement that I used. Uh, a distinctive ironic intonation and a distinctive ironic uh, facial expression. Right, so we'll now turn to the results of our study. Before uh, reporting the results from the ironic comprehension test, we first conducted some preliminary uh, analysis. So firstly, uh, we computed composite scores from variables that were uh, conceptually and statistically related so that to reduce the number of variables entered into our subsequent uh, analysis. So we computed a composite score for the three executive control uh, components, as working memory, inhibition, and switching. And we also computed a composite score for socioeconomic uh, status. 
Now, with regards to the background measures, uh, the three groups uh, were no different in terms of age, gender, general intelligence, and socioeconomic status. However, we found significant uh, differences in terms of, of uh, vocabulary, in that uh, multilingual participants had uh, lower vocabulary skills in the language of testing than both monolinguals and by dialectals, and there were no significant differences between monolinguals and by dialectals. Now, with regards to executive control, we did not find evidence for differences between the three groups in any of the three executive control components. When looking at the raw data, uh, there were some differences in the expected direction, that is multilingual and by dialectal participants had higher raw executive control scores than monolingual participants, but statistically speaking, there were no significant differences uh, between the three groups in any of the three executive control components. Right, so we'll now turn to the main results from uh, the iron comprehension test. Now this slide shows participants' accuracy by meaning condition collapsed across uh, the three groups. So as you can see from this graph, uh, participants performed with ceiling accuracy in both uh, literal conditions. However, accuracy was much lower in the critical ironic uh, condition. Now this slide shows uh, participants' accuracy uh, for the critical ironic items by Q condition, again collapsed across the three groups. Again, as you can see from this slide, uh, participants' accuracy uh, improved uh, when more than one ironic markers were used to indicate that the target statement should be interpreted ironically. So in other words, the presence of more than one, than one ironic markers facilitated iron comprehension in terms of accuracy. Now this slide shows uh, participants' reaction times by mean condition again collapsed across the three groups. So as you can see from this slide, uh, in general, ironic interpretations took longer to process than uh, literal uh, meanings. And finally, this slide shows uh, participants' reaction times by Q uh, condition, again collapsed uh, across the three groups. So these are, are the reaction times for the critical ironic items. Again, as you can see from this um, uh, graph, uh, reaction times decreased as more ironic markers uh, were used. Participants were fastest, uh, were, they were fastest process ironic interpretations in the fourth condition where three different ironic markers were used. And in fact, uh, in this condition, and only in this condition, uh, participants were, uh, participants processed ironic interpretations as fast as literal uh, meanings. Right, now, uh, with regards to the factors affecting the processing and comprehension of irony, we did not find any significant effects uh, when looking at accuracy in the critical ironic condition, but we found some significant effects when looking at reaction times in the critical ironic condition. So firstly, we found uh, a significant effect of working memory in that better working memory skills uh, resulted in faster reaction times for the critical ironic items. In other words, better working memory skills resulted in faster processing of ironic uh, interpretations. And secondly, we also found uh, a significant effect of uh, inhibition, again, on, the, on reaction times in the critical ironic uh, condition, in that again, better inhibition skills resulted in faster processing uh, of ironic uh, interpretations. Now, when including both working memory and inhibition in a single uh, linear uh, regression model, working memory was no longer significant, uh, and the only significant factor was uh, inhibition. That is, uh, inhibition seems to be uh, the crucial factor affecting uh, the processing of ironic interpretations, that uh, better inhibition skills result in faster processing of ironic interpretations. Right, so I will now turn to the group uh, results from the ironic comprehension test. Uh, basically, we compared the performance of uh, multilingual but electal and monolingual participants in terms of both reaction times and accuracy in uh, the various conditions that were included in the ironic comprehension test. And basically, we did not find evidence for any differences between the three groups in either, the, in either reaction times or accuracy in any of the conditions used uh, in the iron comprehension test. And for this reason, I'll just very quickly skip the slides uh, showing the group results for reaction times and accuracy in the, uh, in the various conditions of the iron comprehension test. Right, so this is a summary of our uh, results. In terms of models of irony interpretation, we found some evidence that irony is a fault 
uh, that is firstly you found that in general uh, the processing of ironic interpretations takes uh, longer than the processing of literal meanings. And secondly, we also found that the processing of ironic interpretations depends on uh, inhibition skills. However, on the other hand, we also found some evidence that under certain uh, conditions, and more specifically in our study, in the condition where three different ironic markers were used, in that condition we found some evidence that ironic interpretations can be processed as fast as literal uh, meanings. So uh, the whole set of findings from our study seems to be uh, more in line with the, direct, uh, with the direct access or interactive view of irony interpretation, according to which, at least uh, under certain conditions, ironic interpretations can be processed as fast as literal meanings. Now, in terms of the effect of multilingualism and by dialectalism on irony interpretation, we did not find uh, evidence for differences between the three groups in either, in either reaction times or accuracy in the critical ironic uh, conditions. So the findings from our study seem to be more in line with uh, the view that uh, pragmatic skills by linguas are no different from those of non-linguas, at least given that uh, bilinguas have a sufficient uh, proficiency in the language of testing. And thanks a lot.